back out here in uh, Payson, Utah on a redo, repo. It's a Tahoe, older Tahoe that we've got before. Right here in the driveway. We do have a key for this Tahoe. We actually had to modify to make it work last time. So we got somebody out here right now with a headlamp on coming out to greet us. How you doing? Hey. This your Tahoe? Yeah, I made arrangements. Yeah, they told us to come pick it up tonight. That's part of what they want to do. You got the engine out of it? Yeah, I've got a new engine for it and everything. I've made arrangements with... Uh... Yeah, he asked us to come out and pick it up tonight. We can see if we can get him on the phone. Let me uh, let me give him a call and let him know what the situation well, is as far as the I engine. I him like just last week. No, I hear he said he's been talking with you and stuff, but they asked us to pick it up. Let me, uh, based on the fact that the engine's not in here and that it's sitting here not running, let me call him real quick. Yeah, tell him this So what's your name? My name's Matt. Matt? Yep. I'm Matt. Yeah, good to meet you. Well, um, based on what's going on here, the fact that his voicemail's just picking up right now and I can't get a hold of him, you know, I'm pretty certain he's not going to want us to take it in the condition it's in. Yeah. When, do you about, when about do you think uh, you're going to have the whole thing put back together? Um, i got to go down to Moab either tomorrow or the next day. Okay. And I'll, I wanted to have it going by Monday so I could go to work. Wow, you can throw an engine in that fast? Yeah. How long have you been doing mechanical work? I haven't. I'm an underground miner by trade, so... so you're just learning as you go, huh? Well, I've done it once before. But... Okay. Well, we'll get out of your hair tonight. Just, uh... I would recommend probably just giving him a call in the morning and say, Hey, your repo guy yeah. came out. He'll know by then anyways. But... Well, this is a good investment. It's better... I mean, I could... I could cut my losses and say, I've washed my hands of it. Yeah. Yep. They've been good with me, and I don't want to leave them like that. <laughs> well, work on what you got to get it back up and running and just stay in contact with them, okay? All right. All right, have a good night, dude. Nice work, man. <laughs> it's, it's a piece of work. It's got a lot done to it. Yeah. Take it easy. Yeah. All right, so he talked to the finance officer. Again, one of those situations, thank goodness we've got an after-hours number to deal with this kind of stuff. It hasn't always been like this, and with technology and cell phones and whatnot, we've got, you know, it's set up so that I can talk to just about any one of my finance companies if an issue comes up off hours, and back in the day when you had to wait to make decisions in the morning and stuff, it, it was difficult because uh, a lot of times our hands are tied on certain things, and we may have to take a vehicle that doesn't necessarily have to be taken at night by him being able to talk to them, not clear on what's going on, he's putting a new motor in that thing, he's going to get the vehicle put back together, try to, uh, try to get it liquidated and uh, get them their money. He said it's his. they've been good to him. He doesn't want to leave them hanging. He's doing the right thing, but the vehicle's got mechanical issues right now. The blown motor, this guy's doing something really rare. He's not even a mechanic. He's a freaking underground miner, but he's got an engine hoist. He's got that engine out, and the guy's just figuring it out. Just incredible. He's, anyway, so another person doing the right thing, getting it done, you know, trying to get the loan paid off any way he can, and he's working on things right now. We're able to go out and see the situation and make the call to... Leave the vehicle sit there. Let them keep working on them. You know, it's just no good to us without an engine in it. The engine's torn out of it right now. The hood's off of it. It's got the transmission hanging by a couple pieces of bailing wire. It makes no sense for us to hook that and take that. Whereas there's a lot of my competitors that their driver would just go out, take that thing as is, and bring it back and leave the finance company holding on to a pile of junk. It's going to do them no good. It's going to piss him off, make him just say, screw you. You know, who knows what he's going to do with the engine. He's pulled out of it. He looks bad. He, you know, it's just, it's, you take a situation and you escalate it into a bad uh, overall problem, you know, that just is could have been resolved if you'd had some smart people out in the field knowing how to make judgment calls, and that's what I just did. I assessed the situation, made a judgment call, and, and, and I guarantee it's the right one. And we get paid just the same for going out and doing our job. We, we, like, if anything, if you ask me, we should get paid more for getting account resolution. We get less for taking the vehicle. It's, it's flip flopped in the United States right now. It's we get paid more for picking the car up and less for getting a close on the account getting some kind of resolution done. It's just that doesn't make total sense when you look at the whole scheme of things. It should be the other way around. We're going to go down here to another address just a couple blocks over. We're always trying to, you know, join things together and go to a faraway town, which this one's 30 minutes south of our uh, the center of our call area. So this is the furthest south that we typically go for without our mileage 
kicking in. You know, this is a covered in our, what's called our base coverage area. And we've got some papers to serve on a girl uh, down here in the same town. So we'll get that done. It's about 8.46 in the p.m. Once this is done, I've got a GPS uninstalled to do up in Orem and check it and on the way up. i got to go through Provo, check the skip address, and then uh, just keep rolling from there. Keep running the job, whatever it takes. All right, nothing too exciting on this one. We're just coming up on an address where we've got to uninstall a GPS device off of a 2000 Chevy S10 pickup truck. I uh, called the guy and left him a message, and he actually called me back. 9.30 at night. I didn't even think he was going to call me today. I think I'd be doing it sometime tomorrow, but he called me and says, yeah, come on over, pull it off. So we're right here in Orem. We'll get this done real quick. Let's see, it should be on the right-hand side here. It's probably that white one right there. How you doing? Well, I see the pigtail, but I can't see the device up in there. And I was dropping down the uh, housing on it, and it's got a bunch of 8 millimeter bolts. I don't have an 8 millimeter socket on it, so um, what I'll do is I'll have to get a different tool and then just set up a timer with you, maybe tomorrow. Come by and I just got to drop that plastic thing down out of there and search around up in there. Yeah, anytime after 5.30 it'll work. Perfect. I'll give you a call after 5.30. Okay. All right, thanks a lot. Yeah, that one's a little bit weird. Had a couple of eight millimeter bolts that dropped down that plastic panel, and I could see the pigtail. And I pulled the pigtail down, and coming off of it, the GPS device wasn't even plugged into the power or ground coming off the pigtail. So he's either pulled the device out and knows it, or it's just unplugged and up in there somewhere. So I'm gonna come over tomorrow evening. It's right here, just not even a couple miles over from we're right here in the dead center of our call area. So it's very local, easy to come back by. I go by here a thousand times during a day anyways, but I'll uh, grab a different tool. Now I know what I'm looking for and we'll get up in there and search around see if we can't find our GPS device, but it wasn't even plugged in, wasn't even working on that one. And I, my guess is he probably knew it just by looking at him and making a judgment call and all that stuff is, you don't find them unplugged like that on accident, that's for sure. Anyhow, so yeah, we'll get that one unplugged tomorrow and get it out of there if it is even in there. Maybe he'll, now that we've been out to get it and stuff, maybe he'll, if he's got it pulled out and hidden somewhere, he'll throw it back up in there real quick or something. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what we see tomorrow. All right, it is the next day, and we are back out here on this GPS uninstall. Dude actually uh, called me and said he got home early. We talked to him last night. He said it was going to be after evening, you know, when he got home from work, but he gave me a call just now, about 3.30 in the afternoon, and said, I'm home, come get the GPS device out of my truck, so he's not acting like he doesn't know it's not in there, most likely it just came unplugged somehow, someone was doing something, it's like someone's building a speaker box, a couple 12s, good woodwork. You build that? What's that? You build that? No, I had no limits built for me. See, that looks like my buddy's work over at No Limit. <laughs> he does really, really clean laddering when he uh, does his ports and stuff. I built the one that's in there right now, which is just a single. <laughs> just using up the extra cab? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Awesome. All right, let's jump in here. Let's see what we can figure out on this thing. What does that GPS look like? Just... Oh, the little box? It's uh, a little guy right there. And 
and it's just got a pigtail that comes over and plugs into that pigtail and that's just a jumper that goes to your OBD2 plug yeah. and just pulls power. So and that was actually, those two were actually unplugged, your, your GPS device wasn't even on. Uh, it's because I, uh, I actually changed the heater course, I had to pull the dash. Oh, and that pulled that unplugged, yeah. We, we see that we see that happen. So they couldn't have got it anyway, huh? <laughs> well, you're obviously at the address they have for you, so yeah. unless you were running and hiding. Uh, it's uh, 801. <clears throat> 687. Oh, actually, I got it in my call line. Yeah, 3454, five, four, that's me. Yeah. But yeah, programming in is the uh, repo man. and. But yeah, I got I got a whole bunch of subs I need to get rid of right now, 12s and 10s, uh, and then I've got a couple amps I need to move. And I got a, I got three really good drop down screens, all the way from a big 20 inch down to an 8 inch, and they, all of them have the DVD players built into them. So they're not just the screens; it's the whole unit. What's panel? And Everything, the panel that goes behind the headdress and all of it. So one of them, one of them, one, them, for one of them's DEI. I'm only asking like 300 bucks. You know, the DEI one's the one that it's the 10-inch flip down, and the, or it might be the 12-inch. It's the 12-inch, and the screen, once it's flipped down, actually turns, Swivel. like, swivels and stuff. And I got the remote for that one and the back panel and everything, and it's, it's the direct electronics one. I'll let that one go for 300 bucks. And then I uh, got, like I said, you know, if you want, I'm right here in Orm. You want to just call me and come by and just come in my garage, just look through what I got, maybe write it all down, jot it all down, we'll just talk price on each one. Okay. And then if you're interested in any of it, it's just sit and collect the dust in my garage. Yeah. So, but I'd rather see another car audio enthusiast. You know, it's it's got to be, be being played. Yeah. <laughs> it's just sitting there deteriorating, doing nothing. So, exactly. give me a call and come over and check it out. Hey, Take it easy, brother. We got the uh, story from him. He's got a pretty nice. I was talking about because I saw that speaker box on the back of his truck. He's got a pretty nice sound system there. He turned it on, cranked it up. It pounds pretty good. We got talking about car audio and stuff, and he. Uh, He's in the market always for used stuff, and I always have used car audio equipment. So right there, you know, I'm installing a GPS device from this guy and turn a conversation into a relationship, a relationship into business, and that's networking right there. See how it goes. And on to our next job. All right, so today we are down here in North Provo, South Orem two kind of collide right here like most cities do right on the border this uh, street light that's just north of this dealership we're at is actually one of the boundaries but we are here to put a GPS device on the 2005 Dodge Durango typically the vehicle that they're gonna have us put the uh, GPS device on is pulled up here to the front and right here at the front is an 05 Dodge Durango so I'm guessing it's that white beast right there Plus it has a dealer plate on the back, which means they just went for a test drive. You get to the point in any kind of a job where if you start to look for all the details, little telltale signs, you learn things like that. It just makes you better at what you do. It doesn't matter if it's repossession, plumbing, roofing, heating and air conditioning, corporate, any job you're in, anywhere in the world, anybody smart enough, if you're doing a job, there's details inside the job you do every day and your environment of where you're at, that office, who to know, secret ways to get to a bathroom that's closer than the one that everybody else uses that nobody uses that's always clean you name it there's things you can keep your eyes open for in any job and that's the trick about being really good at anything I'm just really good at doing this because I look for the extra level of information that's out there in anything I do and when you do that you start to be able to see beyond the fabric of this uh, world <laughs> you'll find out what I mean start looking details there's the vehicle we're going to be putting the GPS device on. And why do I know that? Because I paid attention the last 30 times I came to this dealership and started picking up on what they did and their procedures. And when they miss a procedure, I recognize it. I notice it. If all of a sudden I start coming here and the vehicle I'm going to put a GPS device on isn't sitting here with a dealership plate on it, you know, it might be kind of weird. And there might be a reason behind that. And it doesn't ever hurt to ask questions. Say, hey, you know, I noticed you guys stopped putting those vehicles up there. Get the information, find out why things changed. It's, uh, that's the key to noticing that things are a certain way, is that when they aren't that certain way anymore, there's information behind that. A little trick, secret for you there about paying attention. Make you a better skip tracer too. That's a, that's a thing right there. If you learn that trick in skip tracing, yeah, 
<laughs> Every time someone tells you a lie, there's a truth behind it. Figure out what the opposite of the lie is, and you can start figuring out what the, they, they didn't want you to know. Another tip, another secret. This is the GPS device we're going to be installing. It's actually the same exact one that I uh, took off of that white S10 yesterday. And so we'll uh, get this baby put on. Zip ties, screwdriver, one Phillips, one flat. Should be good to go. Pull down the factory OBD2 plug. In another video, I called it the ODB2 plug. <laughs> it's O. B D two. We got these. There we go. Get some slack off that baby. Pull it down here. We have our GPI GPS device pigtail. Plug it in. Make sure we got lights. Little green and red lights start flashing on the GPS device. It starts talking to the satellite, sending its device ID back out, saying, "I'm back online." And within about 30 minutes, their system will have it registered. Put this pigtail plug back up in the factory housing hole. Snaps right back in there. There it goes. That way that looks nice and factory. Back where it's supposed to be. And then the factory one, which is now back here on the pigtail, it's tucked up underneath the dashboard. Just like that. And our device goes up in the dashboard. And on these Durangos, it's really nice because they've got a wire loom right here. It goes back up into the fuse box that we can zip tie right to. Nice and easy. Gives us a good signal high up in the dash. Never have to worry about the device not pinging properly because it has been installed improperly, <laughs> which happens all the time. People that don't know what they're doing with these things. Grab a zip tie. wire harness for the GPS. Grab our Klein wire cutters. Clean up our trash. Grab our tools. That's a GPS install right there. All right, so we got that uh, GPS device installed in that vehicle. Ooh, there's a nice uh, green ZX-10. Good looking bike. Bikes are starting to come out. Oh, check that out. We're looking for a red Jeep in this area. Sorry, got a million things going on here. Checking out a motorcycle as it goes by and I spotted a red Jeep that matches the description of a skip we're looking for. Skip accounts, and his name is Martin. There it is, first one that comes up because it always pulls by the newest. And he's one of the more recent skips we had. 99 Jeep Wrangler, the last four of the VIN. It is, it is red. And this is in the area of where it was last seen. Not our VIN. Anyhow, yeah, starting to see a lot of the bikes come out. It's 
beautiful weather. You can see all the snow on the valley. The ground is pretty much melted. All the pile-ups and snow along the edges and everything. There's little scatters of it in people's backyards where the sun doesn't get to in the shadows. We still have slushy ice. But here in the beginning of March, spring starts to change here in Utah and we start to see things happen. By April, all these dead trees will be blooming. It'll be awesome. Be back on the bike. Can't wait. Cannot wait. It's been a long winter. Long winter. But yeah, we got that uh, GPS done. We're just heading down here through an area. This week. We pull a lot of vehicles out of these trailer courts on both sides of the road, as well as all these duplexes through here. This is a really common area, so we roll through here almost every day. We got a list of skips we're looking for, and it'd be amazed how you can just drive by one and boom, pop it, and there it is. That's the cul de sac over there for that one video I did back when I had long blonde hair. <laughs> My rocker days. Anyways, uh, where I pulled that van out where the lady came out and tried to act like a neighborhood attorney, telling me that the law, what I could, couldn't do, all that stuff. Anyone that's ever seen that video, that was the cul de sac right there where that one went down. I think what we're going to do is, based on the time of the day, it's 12.46. Stop real quick, grab some lunch, and then we're going to head down into Springville. And uh, we got a brand, two brand new ones that have come over today. One's for a VW Passat. has a GPS device on it that has not been working for the last five days. So indicate it's a good indication that the vehicle is either parked in a garage and not moving, or more likely not running and it's got a dead battery. The third possibility is installation error and the device is in and working and someone whoever put it in because this is one that I, I keep track of the ones I install and uninstall and they used to have another company before me for a number of years that did all their installs it was a mechanic shop and mechanic shops aren't always the best place to have electronic devices put in because they're more mechanical not electrical uh, I'd rather see a car audio type store mobile electronic store be putting GPS devices in uh, other than a mechanic, just simply because it just makes more sense from the standpoint of knowledge of wiring and other things and the components of the vehicle. I mean, good, good, good mechanics will sometimes have somebody on staff that's an excellent wiring person, but again, that's wiring into the hood, the dash, uh, throughout the vehicle that has to do with the inner workings of the vehicle, but adding on an aftermarket accessory, mobile, mobile video and audio stores are better for that kind of stuff. So any of you guys out there that work with clients do GPS, be sure that you uh, tell them that if they are currently using a mechanic, explain to them the differences of why and why not to which one to use. But uh, we do see a high frequency of GPS devices that don't work that were put in by this mechanic shop. And we, that's why we started doing things. We're kind of cleaning up the mess, so to speak. And as these vehicles get repossessed and come in, uh, we're mm -hmm. just trying to just get a larger volume of GPS devices out there installed that have been put in by me uh, so that we know that they're working. So moving forward, we got better. Plus then I'm familiar with the vehicle in the front end of the loan. You know, I'm starting to see where ones I've put, I haven't got a lot of them, but probably in the next six to 12 months, I'll start getting repossessions on ones that I did the installs on. And when I catch up to that point, then there'll be a whole nother process of me going through the records of what I kept when I did the install about that. And so that if I do have an issue with an install on one, I can learn better from, okay, on this year make and model, placement is better away from the kick panel and in the subframe of the dashboard, there's a metal plate that's on this year make and model that's blocking the signal, so you got to go beyond that plate or you got to put it in an alternate location. I can start keeping those kinds of notes in my system, and that way we can get better and better at our installs over time. But as of yet, the few that have come over that I installed, they worked every time, and so there was nothing to change, and we got them picked up, but we'll see a higher frequency of those as we get going. The other vehicle we have today that doesn't have a GPS device on it is a redo uh, Hispanic guy. It's a white van that first time we saw this van, we were at the same address looking for a Jeep Liberty. And these guys pull up in their white van, which was not up for repossession at the time, but I know who they are and I know what their van looks like. It's pretty standard. It's just a regular white Dodge Grand Caravan. But they're a skip. They've been up for repo twice since then. Um, and both times I went to that address where I saw the vehicle previously and never showed up. We verified they don't live there anymore. We do have a verification that he's working up in Salt Lake at a steel plant. Looks like it's a steel plant of some kind. We got an address for them in Salt Lake. So after we run south, 
Springville, check the VW. We gotta head north to check her place of employment that we have verification she's working at in American Fork. And then we'll head on up north to uh, Salt Lake and run the POE on this uh, guy because we know the home address is no good. We've already verified that on a previous attempt. And uh, go from there. So we're out here on this uh, one for the blue VW Passat. Looks like each building, one, two, three, four, five sets of garages with four units in each one. And we know that there's eight units per building. So most likely four of the units our priority units they get to uh, pay a little bit more in rent and they have to uh, probably sign some kind of a thing and then they get a garage that goes with their unit. So that means that four of the units don't get garages and they have to park out here and there's extra parking spots on either side of these garage units, which my guess would be where the uh, non-garage ones park and we're not seeing our vehicle parked out here. The wire, the digits, the wireless thing up in American Fork, you know? I think so. Okay. All right. I just got some papers for her, so I'll go through wire work and see. If, do you, what, what time does she usually get home? Like five or so? Whenever? Okay. All right. We'll try catching her at work. Okay. Thank you. All right. So we got an answer at the door. We confirmed that she does live here and that she is at work, and we confirmed that she is at the job that we have for her, which is up in American Fork. So we'll head up there and see if our vehicle is in the parking lot. A baby blue VW Passat and there is a baby blue VW Passat so what we're gonna do we're gonna back up to it and this one's kind of a special case one they've asked us to actually go and make contact with her first before actually hooking it taking it because it has a GPS device on it that has not been working so that's one thing we're gonna check is why the GPS device isn't working once we're talking to her. And also we're gonna see if we can get her on the phone to make a payment on the account before we have to take the vehicle. Because the finance company did tell us a little bit early, jump at the gun as far as the repossession goes. But her numbers are disconnected. She's never missed a payment in a certain period of time, a long period of time. And all of a sudden she comes into refi at the end of last year during a promotion they were doing and she had the co-signer taken off the loan to where it was just her and ever since then there's been issues and so uh, they want to you know because of her payment history she's done so well up to this point they're looking at the history of the account and then they're passing that information on us and helping us make a, an informed decision out in the parking lot of someone's business so i got a girl in the doorway right now looking at me it's probably her 
we'll talk to her and see what she says. We'll see what that, uh, those bent spring leaf brackets did to my brand new tires. The, this was the inside and this was the outside, so I had them pancaked. And this is how it wore on my tires. Brand new. Tread is gone. We've got the alignment all fixed. We got those brackets fixed. The brackets are right back there. That's what was bent, shaped like an S. I should have got a picture of them before I had them take them off and throw them away. It was ugly. Hey, are you? Yeah. Okay, you got a second to talk? Yeah. We um, got an order of repossession for your vehicle from the finance company, but they asked us before we actually took it to talk to you because you're actually only about 16 days behind, but their number, yeah. the number they have for you is disconnected. And they said that, I guess you went in on Christmas to the refinance and they had the co-signer take off the loan. Oh, yeah. And so that's got the, and plus it's got a GPS tracking device on it that's not working. So they wanted you to kind of take a look and see why. Just get up under the dash and look at that. Because oh, okay. put on almost three years ago. I'm making the payment tomorrow. Tomorrow? This is the first time I've ever been late. And that's, what he's, that, that's why he's having us not just pick it up and take off with it because he said your payment history has been awesome. And so he yeah. wants. Can you give him a call right now and just talk to him real quick? Yeah. Okay, just give him a quick call. Is it locked or unlocked? It's Did you grab the key so I can just take a look at that GPS device? Let's take a look at it real quick. So it looks like there is no tracking device on this vehicle. What we can see, the factory ODB2 plug is right there. And you can tell that it's not the aftermarket pigtail. So these guys were charged to have one put on and it's not on there. Yeah, that doesn't work anymore. Okay, do you want to talk to the guy that's here? Yeah. Hey, there is no tracking device installed on this vehicle. Yeah, the, fa the factory, oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> the factory ODB, OBD2 plug is still plugged into the plastic and, and without me actually like pulling her dashboard apart and digging around in there. I, I, what it looks like, it looks like the dash is put on with Allen bolts. And, and you got to pull the whole front of the dash off to access that panel. And so I, I bet they just were like, forget this, and just charge you for it. <laughs> That's what it looks like, because without me actually dropping the whole dashboard and verifying it, I, I can see the factory ODB2 plug, and it's got pink around it, and so I know it's the factory ODB2 plug. OBD2 plug. Yeah. Okay. Well, we know we've got a good POE, and we know we have a good resident, so I wouldn't really worry about the tracking device at this point, unless you want me to. Okay. All right, we'll do that. Thanks. Bye. All right, we're out of here. Thank you. <laughs> and don't forget to lock it. never been late before. It's only because of the this. baby. How far along are you? Eight months. Oh, so you're just about. Are you gonna work straight through? Or are you gonna take some leave time? I'm. I'm gonna work till the day I go into labor. Yeah, I, we're going to labor right here at Digis. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, the guys that started this company were buddies of mine back in the day when it was in Orem, oh, and I did. A, I did a lot of contract work with them, and I actually used to go out and put their. their I went around to the very first homes and talked to the rich guys up on the east bench, and were like, "Can we pay you to put dishes on your house and stuff?" And I had a bunch of contacts up along the east bench, and I was. When they were in there, I mean, there was only eight people working for the company at that time, and so that's kind of my history with Digis. It's nice to see them doing so well now. Yeah. It's a good company. They're, they're, the guys that own this are awesome. Yeah. So, all right, well, we'll hope we don't have to run into you again. Thanks. See you later. Eight months pregnant. Wow. Yeah, she looks like her belly is popping out. She's about to have herself a kid. But, yeah, so that worked out really well. Didn't have to touch the vehicle. Didn't even have to hook to it. We got inside and checked. There's no DB GPS device. So the company that used to do their installs built them for an install on that one and said that it was there. And we talked to him and he's gonna, I don't know if he's gonna call them and try to get them to reimburse them for the install fees or whether he's just gonna let it go. But that's the first time that we've ever come across that where 
They said there was a GPS in it, and there wasn't one at all. Um, and they opted to not have us put one on out here in the field because of the simple fact that she's working where she says she works, lives where she says she lives, hasn't missed a payment in a couple of years, and this is the first time an issue's come up. She's talked to them on the phone. They got arrangements for tomorrow. So we just, we'll put it on hold, you know, and then uh, when she pays good tomorrow, we get paid our fees for doing our work. Didn't have to take the vehicle. Much better this way, much better.